Ladies and gentlemen, in this Red Gaming City Comp video we have a smorgasbord of tech news which has popped up over the past 24 or so hours. We're going to be starting things out with AMD's Threadripper, specifically a 12 core derivative where specs have leaked out onto the internet. Then we're going to move on to Vega because yet more information has leaked out concerning the upcoming uh, graphics cards from once again AMD. And then we're going to move over to Intel and AMD because yes it would appear that the two companies corroborating on a new chip which actually features an Intel CPU and an AMD GPU. We'll get into that in a moment. And finally, PCI SIG are launching a new PCI Express interface. That's right, 4.0 is coming and they are already working on 5.0 as well and we already have the specifications of that. But with all of that said, my name's Paul and let's just jump into this because as I said, there is a lot to discuss. I'm fairly sure that the majority of you do know what AMD's Threadripper is, but for those who don't, I'll quickly give you the too long didn't read. It is AMD's answer to Intel in the high-end desktop arena. It's on the X399 platform, not to be confused with Intel's X299 platform, and Threadripper is powered by a multitude of Ryzen cores. How many is a multitude? Well, up to 16 cores has been confirmed by AMD. This isn't quite as many as what um, Intel offer for its HEDT, with the flagship 7980XE been confirmed by Intel to feature 18 cores and 36 threads, thanks to hyper-threading. But, unfortunately for Intel fans, that's not going to appear until the next year. Anyway, now we have that out of the way, a thread ripper by the name of 1920 has been confirmed. And it looks to be very impressive indeed. The clock speed for the CPU, which, just to clarify, is 12 cores, 24 threads, has a base frequency of 3200 MHz. The turbo frequency has not been confirmed yet, unfortunately. There is also an engineering sample which has a rather ungodly and unwieldy name, so I'm not going to uh, read it out for you, but it does end up in GA GAF4, excuse me, and it does um, feature the full... 16 uh, cores, 32 threads. Its base frequency is 3400 MHz. Its turbo frequency is all the way up to 3700 MHz. In other words, pretty much up the wazoo. Now, the interesting thing for me is not necessarily the fact that these parts are listed. In other words, the fact that it says Rise, AMD Ryzen Threadripper 1920. That's not really what I find interesting. Instead, the thing for me is that the chips are already being produced in such a way that well, it's no longer an engineering sample. We're actually getting very close to pretty much final production silicon. Don't forget, AMD have teased us that it's going to have a summer launch. And obviously, there's not like, you know, 12 months of summer. So they only have a few more months really for us to get this, you know, in our, in our uh, respective houses for them to meet the target. So it's looking to be like they will reach that target, which to me is kind of the, the news story here. Unfortunately, what we don't have are well, you know, significant benchmarks. AMD have released a few things, and there are a couple of leaks below how genuine some of those are is, well, iffy at best. And quite frankly, one or two benchmarks here and there, let's say of a CPU-Z uh, benchmark, isn't really what I want to see. Of course, it is down to a multitude of different benchmarks and a multitude of different applications, as I'm very curious to know what the lower-end SKUs, which are going to have a far you know, far less cores and threads available, how that's going to perform with quad-channel quad memory. And we do know that Ryzen has been very memory sensitive. In other words, bandwidth does seem to make quite the difference with this particular CPU as well as latency as well. Unfortunately, what we do not have here is, of course, benchmarks. <clears throat> now, when it comes to benchmarks, the problem is a lot of the leaks, when benchmarks do start appearing online, A, how genuine are they, and B, they always seem to be, well, kind of anemic in terms of, you know, benchmarks. So what I mean by that is you might get like a CPU-Z score or you might get a Cinebench R11.5 or something like that. Yes, AMD have released a few benchmarks, but a lot of them you don't get any real context to them. 
And of course, they have shown off against a variety of Intel CPUs in some instances in the past. But even then, it's like it's not against enough processors or enough applications or whatever. And it's not exactly in control test environments the where we can be super, super duper sure. What we do know is that Ryzen is quite memory frequency sensitive. And supposedly, all Ryzen CPUs will offer quad channel memory support. And better still, it's going to support. SMT down the entire lineup, which is absolutely amazing. Anyway, let's shift our focus on to the other big product that we're waiting for from AMD, and that is Vega. The chaps over at videocards.com have managed to find a couple of Vega GPU engineering samples. Now, we all know the code names for Vega, perhaps the most infamous of which is 687F colon C1, where we've seen that a multitude of different times previously, and that is the GPU that's got 1500 megahertz, 925 megahertz on the memory clock. But we also have a couple of others as well, uh, which have appeared on your screen. It wasn't too long ago that we were discussing the Radeon Vega Pros. Now, these cards will, of course, appear in the Macintosh uh, line of computers from Apple, the iMac Pros, and uh, during uh, the actual product page itself, it does mention we have up to 400 gigabytes per second memory bandwidth. And as you can see, the figures on screen, uh, simply by doing the mathematics on the clock speed, we're most likely going to be getting way over that with these particular GPUs over 480 gigabytes per second in some instances. Therefore, it's most likely that these are going to be higher end, potentially candidates for RMX Vega. But quite frankly, because they are only engineering samples, you should not take this as uh, indicative of necessarily what we will be getting. Quite frankly, um, AMD seem to be very cagey at the moment re regarding the specifications of RX Vega. I don't really feel that that's a positive or a negative thing. In other words, I don't feel that that's them slipping behind schedule, but it's also not um, you know, them hiding it from NVIDIA or anything like that. It's just kind of how they're operating at the moment. It's very weird. I'm very, very happy to talk about what Vega can do, what the changes are versus Polaris, but when it comes to specific models, specific timings, clock speeds, that type of stuff, in other words, actual specifics, they're being very, 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 very secretive. And ultimately, it's down to you whether you want to believe that Vega is a disappointment and isn't going to quite hit the targets that we're hoping for, or whether Vega is just going to kick ass. Personally, and I have no vested interest either way, and I've mentioned this a couple of times previously, I do feel it's going to be faster than Pascal, simply because of the launch schedule. It just doesn't make sense for me for it not to. I mean, let's just be honest, if they released a GPU, and this is making an assumption, of course, that it is roughly the same pricing as Pascal, so let's say a £400 or $400 part versus another $400 part, I would expect Vega to be faster, simply because the market won't really tolerate a graphics card which is slower at the same pricing. You know, companies have tried to do it before, and it just didn't work out. And you know, that's kind of how that's kind of what happens. Anyway, um, we're gonna tackle something a bit differently, a bit different here, and that is an Intel CPU with an integrated Radeon graphics card. Yep. Now, this, from what I can tell, is specific for Apple. A couple of you actually emailed me this, so I actually missed it because it popped up a couple of days ago. In fact, a website by the name of Semi Accurate was actually reporting this a few days ago, but I missed it, and so a bunch of you emailed me about this, and we have another report on the 8th of June, which has also just popped up, which a couple more of you emailed me about, so thanks very much for that. So it's very interesting because this Intel graphics card is, um, sorry, this Intel CPU has an AMD GPU in the device ID. And according to Fudzilla, and this is going to be utilized for a notebook. And basically, as you can probably imagine, it's for efficiency and performance sake rather than anything else. And there are other reports, and this is one's coming from Benchlife, and this happened from earlier this year, so 2017, that some folks are going to be calling this KB Lake G, whether that's actually going to be the final real name, you know, that we see. Who knows? But supposedly this actually might be for other manufacturers as well. In other words, we could see this going up and down the 
you know, various OEMs, perhaps even Dells of the world as well. It's going to be quite interesting whether AMD and Intel do do this, you know, and offer it for a broader range of customers. Now, you've got to say to yourself, well, why the hell would Intel and AMD cooperate over this? I mean, after all, the two companies are basically butting heads and fighting tooth and nail when it comes to the CPUs right now. Why would AMD ever even think about licensing this? And ultimately, really, it comes down to money. And that obviously makes a lot of sense. And to be honest with you, when you start getting into the absolute ridiculous world of technology and deals and, you know, profits, it starts to get really murky. Um, I feel it's well outside the remit of this video, but for those who don't know, you should do some Googling on the fact that AMD are basically licensing Intel the 64-bit uh, architecture or rather extensions and then you've got Intel, which are licensing AMD the rights to make x86 processors as a whole. So it's just, it's just, it's just kind of murky. So I guess for both companies, it makes a lot of sense. It means that they might not have gotten this deal uh, if they could only use their own technology. So from Intel's point of view, AMD have better GPUs, and perhaps in the instance that um, this is, you know, based on Intel have a CPU which is more in line with what. Apple were looking for in terms of the power requirements, so it just kind of is what it is. Finally, uh, let's talk about PCI Express 4, shall we? Let's face it, PCI Express 3 has been around for some time, and that is putting it mildly, with the base specifications being made on the very, very, very end of 2010, November to be precise. So, you know, that's a long time, but basically seven years later, we're now in the beginnings of PCI Express 4.0. Now, there is a lot of changes here, but let's just be realistic, primarily for what most people care about, it's bandwidth, and it doubles it over PCI Express um, 3.0, as you can probably imagine. So this means that PCI Express 4.0 offers 16 GTS and 16 gigabits per second of link bandwidth for a peak of 64 gigabytes per second per 16 lane slot. Those figures are maximum and theoretical, so don't necessarily mean they will be achievable in real world. And obviously, we shall see that being doubled with PCI Express 5, and we're going to be hitting 128 gigabytes per second with similar, um, you know, similar specifications. That though, will not be hitting uh, stores until at some point, at least in 2019. So I guess there are some questions immediately you're going to start asking yourself, should you buy a motherboard? Like, you know, are you going to be left out in the cold? Well, don't forget that the standards will be back with the compatible graphics cards for now are not going to require this. So that's for the sake of argument, and obviously I'm not saying this is the case, but let's say that you bought a new motherboard, let's say you buy... I don't know, X299 board, and you buy the requisite processor, and then next year, Volta comes out, and let's say it was PCIe 4, then you should still be able to use it on a PCIe 3 board, and I highly doubt you're going to get penalised in terms of performance with Volta. Maybe, in theory, if you have a lot, and I do mean a lot, of... Um, multi-graphics, so sorry, multiple uh, GPUs in your system, then it might start making a difference, but you also need a CPU, of course, which is fully compliant with this as well, so in other words, don't worry too much about it, you're not going to be left out in the lurch. With all of that said, hopefully you've enjoyed the video, I'll see you soon, take care, bye for now.